you will only agree to a deal that is a good deal for Canada. We're not there yet. Donald Trump had threatened to cut Canada out of NAFTA if the Canadians didn't sign on to a new deal by today. But that hasn't happened. Instead, the president sent a letter to Congress saying when the talks finally wrap up, he's ready to approve a new pact with Mexico and with Canada if it is willing. The president was 600 kilometers from the negotiating table, but his presence loomed over the discussions. Trump had to defend himself after comments he made about Canada off the record ended up being published. I made a statement about Canada, which is fine, because I love Canada. But they've taken advantage of our country for many years. Trump said he would not make any NAFTA concessions to Canada, adding if he said that publicly, Canada would be too insulted to sign a deal. But I said, in the end, it's OK, because at least Canada knows how I feel. So it's fine. It's fine. Canadian negotiators confronted the U.S. about the comments, but later said that Trump's views were not being mirrored at the table. Ambassador Lighthizer and his team have been negotiating in good faith and with goodwill. That goodwill is going to be tested when negotiators sit down again next week. The U.S. is pushing for Canada to allow farmers to sell more dairy products north of the border, while Canada is refusing to back down on demands the U.S. drop its request to kill the dispute resolution system. We have been very clear about where uh, our red lines are. We've been very clear about where uh, we think there's room for uh, give and take. Uh, this is something that uh, we take seriously as a renegotiation. We understand how this works. We've remained good faith. The one thing that everyone agrees on, they're ready for a break. Negotiators tried to cram weeks worth of work into four days, and they didn't quite get there, Rosie. Okay, so where is Mexico in all this? Do they need to get back to the table at some point, too? The Mexicans were actually spotted at the Canadian Embassy for some meetings this afternoon, but they're not expected to actually formally re-enter the negotiations until Canada and the U.S. deal with all of their bilateral issues. Okay, Katie, tools down for you for a little bit anyway. Thank you. That's the CBC's Thanks. Katie Simpson in Washington. The U.S. Capitol building, where much will be decided in the coming weeks after U.S. President Donald Trump sent a letter to members stating his intention to eventually ink a deal with Canada. The first big date to watch? This coming Wednesday, September 5th, that's when Canadian and American negotiators go back at it. The letter then says that over the next few weeks, members of Congress and business leaders should be able to have a look at the agreement. It offers no specific dates, though, and if all goes well, Trump intends to sign a trade agreement with Canada and Mexico 90 days from today, which is November 29th. Obviously, there are no guarantees of a deal at all. The Americans seem to be content to keep playing hardball, but Canada, too, has its sticking points. Chapter 19, NAFTA's dispute resolving mechanism. It allows countries to work out disagreements through a politically neutral panel. The Americans want to scrap it. Canada is adamant that it stays in some form. And there's the $20 billion dairy sector. Trump wants Ottawa to remove protections and open it up. But with over 200,000 jobs on the line and concerns of cheap American dairy flooding north, Canada is unlikely to budge. And then there's Canada's cultural industry. They tend to see uh, cultural matters, as in virtually everything else, as uh, something that has a dollar sign on it. It's never been easy to compete with a giant next door. I was in full support of his proposal of free trade. That's why Canada insisted on and won some key cultural exemptions during free trade talks back in 1987, like content quotas, government subsidies, and strict rules on foreign ownership. They automatically carried over into NAFTA, and they've worked well and help launch successful careers. But as politics and technology change, are those exemptions in danger? Jérôme Payette is with the Coalition for the Diversity of Cultural Expressions, a group committed to protecting them. If we uh, go in a digital uh, economy and, and for culture as well, and there's no, not any way to uh, support uh, our actors, our creators, our producers, our publishers, uh, they will be in serious trouble because, of course, the USA has, uh, is a powerhouse uh, regarding culture. So they create a lot, very good content, 
that uh, we cannot compete without any government support. Just and another sticking like point for Canadian negotiators to keep in mind before talks resume uh, next week. That's about where she is. You want to leave it? We're at the end of what has surely been one of the most challenging weeks of Justin Trudeau's government between NAFTA and the pipeline. The host of Power and Politics, Vashi Capellis, joins me now. Vashi, I know you've been talking to people, reaching out to people in government. Give us a sense, a sense of how they're feeling tonight. Well, hi, Rosie. There are there are a lot of concerns on the part of people I've been speaking to in, in government, not just about uh, NAFTA, but especially about the pipeline file. That decision was a big blow to the mantra that they really got elected on and that we've heard so many times from Justin Trudeau, this idea that the environment can be protected while the economy can grow at the same time. And this court decision really provides the biggest test of that almost campaign slogan that we've heard over and over and over again. And people in government are concerned that, that te they will fail that test. On the NAFTA file, I mean, there is, uh, is some sort of mitigated optimism, I guess you could say, or cautious optimism. They, they are—it's not the worst-case scenario, for sure. Things didn't fall apart. But it's also not the best-case scenario. They didn't get a deal. And they're worried. Sources are, I've spoken to are worried about how far apart they are on some of the major sticking points. OK. So what's the plan to move forward if there is one? Yeah, it's a difficult one. On, on NAFTA, even if they do get the best-case scenario and there's a deal, they have to try and sell whatever concessions they make domestically, and that won't be easy. Mm -hmm. On the pipeline file, they have to figure out, are they going to appeal it, or are they going to start consultations all over again? And sources I said, they feel like they almost have handed the opposition a gift two weeks out from Parliament resuming and, you know, a, and a year out from an election. Okay. Vashti, thanks for this tonight. appreciate it. No problem.